Good morning. Today we're going to be learning about the piecewise function. And the piecewise function is a special type of function because it's actually made up of a bunch of little pieces. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you a quick little definition of the piecewise function, and then we're going to hop right into some practice. So a piecewise function is simply a function that's made up of a finite number of pieces. So what we're saying is that the piecewise function is actually a function made up of a bunch of little functions or a bunch of little equations or graphs. So the features of a piecewise defined function. A piecewise defined function is a function defined by at least two equations that we'll be calling pieces. So you'll be hearing me say the word piece a lot which applies to different parts of the domain. So this is when I would ask you, what's the domain? The domain is your x values. So we're going to put a little x above it. So our domain can be different. So our domain is our x values. And our domain is not the same for each part or each piece. Piecewise defined functions can take on a variety of forms. Their pieces may all be linear. A combination of forms, such as constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, square root, cube root, exponential, etc. The list can go on and on and on. Due to this diversity, there is no such thing as the parent for these functions. The example below that we're going to look at will contain a linear, quadratic, and constant piece. So, for instance, what you're going to be eventually learning around next week is you're going to actually learn how to do this. based off looking at the equation. So we're not going to really look at the graphing component today. We're going to look at the more evaluating piece. But you're going to do some delta math and Desmos practice where you're actually able to graph it. So notice that the changes focus around the x values of 1 and negative 1. That's where our color changes. Um, when graphing, focus on where the changes in the graph occur. So look at where your domain changes. So for instance, this graph, we would say, is f of x equals x plus 2 for x is less than or equal to negative 1. It's equal to 1 from negative 1 to 1. And it's equal to x squared for all values of x greater than or equal to 1. The piecewise function shown in this example is continuous, meaning that there are no gaps or breaks in the plotting. It's all connected. And in this example, the domain is all real numbers since all x values have a plotted value. So for instance, there is no bullet holes on our paper. So I'm going to just draw a sketch of a quick bullet hole. So if you have an example of a bullet hole like this, it is not continuous because it doesn't have an x value at x equals 3. Okay. So let's do our first example. So whenever we evaluate, all we're going to do is basically rely on our domain. So evaluate the following for f of x equals 3x minus 5 for all values of x greater than 4, and x squared for x is less than or equal to 4. So remember, all we're doing with these values is we're simply substituting them into our equation. So I'm actually going to color code this. I'm going to call this my red equation. And I'm going to call this my blue equation. So when I say f of 7, I want to plug in 7. So I have to ask myself, is 7 smaller than 4? No, it's not smaller than 4. Is 7 larger than 4? Yes. So I'm going to do it in the red equation. So all you do is you just do f of 7 equals 3 times 7 minus 5. And you can just type it into your calculator or do it in your head. 3 times 7 is 21 minus 5 is 16. And that's it. You're just plugging it in, and that's your final answer. You're not plugging it into both because we don't have a 7 in x squared. We just have a 7 in our red equation. Now we're going to plug in f of 4. So I have to ask myself, is 4 larger than 4? No. Is 4 less than or equal to 4? Yes. 4 is the exact same thing as 4. So f of 4 is equal to 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. So I'm getting the exact same answer. Now I'm going to plug in negative 3. 
So I have to ask myself, is negative three larger than four or is it smaller than four? It's smaller than four. So I'm going to plug in negative three into this equation for this piece. Negative three squared is simply negative three times negative three, which is a nine. And that's your final answer. So what I would like you to do is try to do the next piece by yourself. So we're gonna evaluate each of the following for f of x. So I'm gonna color code it again. So if you had colored pencils, I would basically write each piece in a different color. So I'll just make my top one black. I'll make my middle one red. And I'll make my bottom one green. So for our first part, or our first piece, we're gonna evaluate f of negative two. So when I look at my domains, I have to ask myself, where does negative two lie? So when I look at it, I'm gonna go from bottom to top. Negative two is not larger than 10, so it can't be in my green piece. Negative two is not between three and 10, so it can't be in my red piece. So by default, negative two has to be in my black piece because it's smaller than three. So I plug in negative two. I'm gonna use my black marker this time. So f of negative two equals negative negative two minus four. You can type this right into your calculator as you wrote it, or you can do it in your head. I would recommend you do some of these in your head. That way you can practice your fluency. The negative of a negative two is two, and two minus four is negative two. So that's basically telling you that when I plug in negative two, my y coordinate is negative two. Now we're gonna plug in 12. Now instead of going from bottom to top, I'm gonna go top to bottom. Is 12 smaller than three? Nope. Is 12 in between three and 10? Nope. Is 12 larger than 10? Yes. So I'm gonna plug it into my green piece. So f of 12 equals 120 over 12 plus 5. 120 divided by 12 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. That's your y coordinate. Now we're going to go on to part C where we do f of 10. We have to ask ourselves is 10 smaller than 3? Nope, it's larger than three. Is 10 in between three and 10? Yep, so it's going into the piece two. So when I plug in 10, I'm gonna be plugging in as 10 squared minus seven. Ten times ten is a hundred. A hundred minus seven, ninety-three. Ooh, that's a big number. But guess what? Number, big numbers are numbers, so they can be correct. Now I'm going to plug in f of 6, and I have to ask myself, where does that 6 go? Is it smaller than 3? Nope. Is it in between 3 and 10? Yeah, so it's going right into my red piece again. So I'm going to plug it in as f of 6 equals 6 squared minus 7. So I get 36 minus 7 which is 29. And that's your final answer. So make sure that you email myself or Ms. Townsend if you have any questions. Um, and make sure you write down your daily noticing your question and you complete your independent practice. What we're going to be doing tomorrow, I was gonna originally have you graph these, but we're gonna actually evaluate these by looking at a graph. Again, email me if you have any questions or email Ms. Townsend. Have a great day, ladies.